Well, hi everyone, this is Don Smith, and I have returned finally from pretty much three months of being on the road and traveling all over the world. Um, it's nice to be home, and I'm going to be home pretty much through the holidays, other than one uh, workshop out in Monument Valley next uh, month with Ron Modra and my wife, Barry. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But today, I want to do a video because a lot of you have been asking me and writing on social media, boy, you're sure lucky that you show up right when that moon is there. And really, this is not about luck at all. This is uh, a lot about planning. In fact, landscape photography, I, I've been doing this stuff for 43 years, and there's more planning that goes into landscape photography than luck. Every once in a while, yeah, we'll be right place, right time. But more often than not, it's, it's understanding weather and atmosphere. And when it comes to these moons, uh, there's really no way I can just luck out. I have to plan this. So if you're interested in understanding how I go about planning shots like this, and this was one I planned and shot um, on Sunday evening of this month, November 10th. And I'm going to show you another picture. This is really a cool blue oak tree that I had in mind. And I had to wait until this time of year to go after this picture because I know where this location is. And the remainder of the year, the, the, the moon is just too far to the south to get it into position. So the moon is on a northerly track up until next month, uh, December 20th, 21st, when it will be winter solstice. And then it's going to reverse and it starts going to start going on a southerly track. And uh, so I knew the moon was going to be on the northerly track. It worked out. I wanted to use this tree. Here was another image I captured just just as the light was really starting to fade, but we still had this pretty warm hue in the sky. And it all kind of started with this shot. Uh, that was telephoto. I, By the way, I did all of these pictures with the new Sony 200 to 600 lens. Absolutely love that lens. It's razor sharp all the way through. You only lose a one third of a stop of light. And uh, I have been using it with my 1.4 and 2x converters just amazingly sharp all the way through the zoom range. Um, I had a friend tell me he's been reading online uh, some negative reviews, and I don't know what's going on there. I can tell you that the lens I'm using um, is uh, just absolutely, you can see how razor sharp this really is. So um, great lens. So anyway, what I want to show you is how I went about planning for these shots. And there is a software, and actually a free software called the Photographer's Ephemeris. I know a lot of you have heard about this, but maybe you don't know exactly how to use it. And here's the deal before we get into this. There is really only one time a month where I can shoot a full moon close to sunrise time so the light on the landscape matches the light on the moon. And you have to understand that the moon is a full sunlit daylight shot. So that, that, you have to take that into account. So I can't just show up on any night once the full moon, you know, is, is up or close to the full moon and think I can pull these shots off. Uh, conversely, there is only one time that I can shoot a full moon set and match it with the landscape. And that is generally, but not always, the actual day of the full moon. So uh, what I love about this app is that you can install it on your tablets or your phones, which I've done, but I rarely use it. I just use the free version here on my computer and I'm going to open up and you can see by default it picks up today's date. So let's back up to um, November 10th, Sunday. And this was the location that the tree was on. It was right about up on this little mound. And you can see, if this is the first time you've ever seen this software, the Photographer's Ephemeris actually works in conjunction with Google Maps. And uh, these orange lines are representing the sun. These blue lines are representing the moon. This light blue line is the one I'm caring about because this is what's representing the moon rise. Now I'm looking towards the east as I extend out. So we all know that the moon is gonna rise from the east, okay? 
Uh, but what we can't figure out by just simply looking at moonrise and moonset times, like I could come down here and it's showing me that 425, the moon was starting to rise and at 459 was going to be sunset. Okay, well, you're saying, well, that's 34 minutes before sunset, no problem. But we have to factor in the elevation of these mountains. You can see this peak here, right here is 2,000 feet. Um, I'm not exactly sure the elevation I'm standing, but I was below this peak of 1,000. I'm gonna guess I was right about 500 feet, right in there. So the key one though is where is that moon gonna be coming over and the highest peak on this line was 2,000 feet. That's close enough to me. Okay, so here's how we go about figuring this out. Uh, up here, you're gonna see this. If I was to click on this, this was gonna, this will just simply recenter this dot into the middle of this map, which I don't want. I knew, I know this road very intimately. I've shot along this road at various points, and I knew that tree was roughly, you know, somewhere right about in, in this range on that road. So I'm gonna come down here to what's called a geodetic point. And this is a secondary pin, and I'm going to place that, and you can see now this grayish pin shows up. Um, on this secondary line, it's showing me, um, let, well, let's get our time. It's not 1213. Let's get up closer to the actual moonrise time, which is 1625. So I'm just going to scroll out here to 1626, close enough. Okay, this is the full moon line right here where the moonrise is starting. But because this number here, this azimuth number is minus, well, it's at zero right now, I can't see it from my position. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to continue to scroll this line until I see that number. You can still see it's gray. It's at 2.4 now going along. I wanna go until boom, it goes to black. Okay, now, I'm going to drop this pin right along. Let's go right, right about that ridge line right there. Okay, so this is where the moon began, this light blue line. But when I'm going to actually start to see it is going to be 4.51 in the afternoon, uh, eight minutes before sunset. Okay, I'm still in that window where I got enough light on the landscape. It's going to be in shadow now. The sun may, may be up on the highest of the peaks but certainly where I'm gonna be shooting, it's gonna be in shadow, but it's gonna be a bright enough shadow that I can expose for the moon, again, which is a daylight exposure, and make that work. I call this a window of opportunity, and that's why you always wanna look the day before um, sunset, usually. And you can see it's not exactly 100% full, but it's, let's just round this up, it's 98% full. So to most people's eyes, it's, it's going to look full. Um, and sure enough, at 4.51, I checked my metadata on my camera, just the tip of the moon, let's go back to these images here, just the tip was starting to poke over the top of these trees right here. So um, I actually did this shot where I got in really tight at 600. And then I quickly moved up the road from my position of the actual tree I wanted because it wasn't, uh, you can see there was a slope here and I couldn't see it yet. And I got this tree to kind of get this. I always like putting the moon in front of something here so people can't say, hey, you know, you dropped that moon in your shot. There's no way I'm that good at masking that stuff in. But this was a tree that I really wanted because of all this character in this tree. And um, at this time, we were getting, I'd have to go back and check the metadata, but I believe, oh, okay, right up here. Um, this one was right at, well, it says 601, but that's 501 because I hadn't set it for day, you know, daylight savings time yet because I've been traveling. So that was literally two minutes after um, sunset, pretty much what the photographer's ephemera showed me. And all I had to do is just kind of fine tune my position. It was real easy. I had a hill behind me. So I just kind of went up the hill a couple of steps. I could see that moon coming and I just got in position. And then I just see the, saw the tip of it start to rise. 
and I just kept shooting and kind of at the end of the window I was at let's just round this out and say 606 and really maybe I had about two minutes left to shoot what's going to happen at that point and this is why I talk about a window is the 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 illumination on the moon is going to stay constant, but the illumination on the landscape and the tree is going to continually get darker, darker. So you're going to get outside that contrast range. Where is it exactly? Well, that's going to depend on your sensor and just how good or sensitive your sensor is. And with the Sony a7R4, I think it's got the most dynamic range of any sensor currently out on the market. So I was able to keep shooting. Probably I could have went till about 610, which was about 11 minutes. Uh, and at this time of the year, we have a real short civil twilight period. You may get in a little extended window if you were shooting in the summertime, but uh, civil twilight is about, uh, last I checked, about 28 minutes from sunset to actual darkness uh, to where we get to what we call not nautical twilight. So again, that's how easy it is. Um, let me go back here and just emphasize that this is really the key number you want to be watching down here when it goes gray to black. That's when you're going to see the moon. So that's how easy it is. Uh, the next full moon next December, we will actually be out in Monument Valley. I talked about that a little earlier. I will, we meaning my wife, Barry, and Ron Madra, who really came up with the idea for this workshop. I'm excited about it. We're sold out, unfortunately, this year with a waiting list. Um, however, we are going to post dates in about a month for our 2020 version, where we're going to actually be in the valley um, shooting all the famous features down in the valley at sunrise, sunset light. And we're actually going to do a full moonrise from up on the rim. And then during the day, we're going to have Navajo Indians in, in full outfit um, and do a lot of portraiture, which Ron's going to teach that portion of it. And Ron's been a 27 year staffer at Sports Illustrated. It's had 75 plus covers. So um, this gentleman knows what he's doing when it comes to portraiture, believe me. And he's just an all around great guy. So um, use this program when you guys go to, to, to shoot a moon. You don't have to just use it on a full moon. You can play on crescent moon shoots, um, any phase of the moon, really. You can, you can use it to find out when there's black sky, if you just want to go out and shoot the Milky Way, things of that sort. Really cool program. And it doesn't cost you a penny if you're using it here on the computer. I just usually screenshot this and then print it out. So I have all my times with me. And um, it's just simple as that. So that wraps it up. I hope this has helped you. I hope uh, you understand that these moonshots are usually not left to chance. They are planned. And it's pretty simple, pretty easy to do. So until next time. I uh, hope all of you get out and make some cool images and share them online, and we will be talking to you soon. Take care.